Down here at the bottom, this shows our internal admin dashboard. So this has been really helpful for us because what it shows us is everything that the authors have done when they've submitted a paper. So if they took any of the genes out because they didn't think um, they should be associated with the paper, we know that. Likewise, if they add them anything in, we can figure out which ones we might have missed. So we can track all of that for every submission that we get. So right now, the authors can verify entities, and they can tell us about data types. But we want to start having them help us with the third part of curation, which is fact extraction. So in order to start investigating how to do this, uh, we've basically uh, tried two test cases. So the first is uh, cell and tissue expression and subcellular localization. So this figure just shows um, a really nice expression pattern for a nuclear receptor in C. elegans where you can see localization to nuclei in particular tissues. And this is just um, one of the statements in the paper describing that localization. And then we also wanted to try protein kinase activity. Uh, this is something that we're particularly interested in in the context of the gene ontology's causal activity models because this would uh, help us identify regulatory relationships uh, between genes. So the goal here was to identify curation-relevant sentences that we could suggest to authors and then sort of guide them uh, in the fact extraction pathway. So the first thing that we tried um, was to make use of data that we already had in the database for sentences. So expression patterns is one of the first data types that had been curated in WormBase. So we had almost 20 years worth of data for this. And curators would typically um, extract from the paper sentences that supported the annotations that they made, and we would include them in the curation in WormBase. So we had a very large data set that we could use for this. But the one caveat was that we knew ahead of time that this data set wasn't maybe quite as clean as we might want. Um, and the reason for that is if you can see, say, for the last sentence here in this subcellular localization pattern, it talks about how that localization changes in a mutant background, right? That's not necessarily the expression data that we would capture for this. We might capture that as regulation on that expression. So we knew that was in there, but we thought we have all this data and we should really try to use it. So this is the initial approach that we took for this. Uh, so this is the work that Valerio has done. And so we started with our training set, like I said, all the existing curation associated sentences we had. For negative data, we took a random set of sentences from papers that we had val manually validated for being negative for expression data. And then what Valerio did is he performed sentence embedding using BioSentVec from Jean Lu's group to transform sentences into computable vectors. We then computed the centroid for all those positive sentences, defined a threshold distance from that cent centroid, and used that to determine if a sentence is likely to be positive or negative. And then lastly, select a cosine similarity threshold that maximizes uh, the <laughs> F1 score. And then what we did is uh, we used that model to then um, randomly select sentences from new papers, and that was um, subject to manual validation. So this shows the results of that initial uh, effort. And the result basically was that doing it with that training data was not precise enough for us to identify truly what we call curatable sentences. So when we do the manual validation, and we talked a little bit about this at the workshop yesterday, we find that there are sort of different flavors of positive sentences, right? And so sometimes um, you can find that many of the things that um, are brought back by the model, the language is very close, right? But it's not necessarily either relevant to the curation you want to do or it doesn't identify sentences uh, with great precision that you could really make an annotation from. And that's what these numbers show. So those things that we call language positive, the precision is, is reasonable, it's quite good. The recall is okay, but then you can see as we go to the what we call curation relevant or the ultimate goal curation positive, the precision goes so low that it's really not usable. So 
we knew then that we were going to have to go back and really optimize our training data. So what Daniela and I did, uh, Daniela for expression pattern and I did for the protein kinase activity, is we went back to sentences that either had been curated or we were in the process of curating. And what we said is, all right, we're going to try to mimic the manual curation process, knowing that curators look at a lot of different sentences in the paper when you're doing this to convince yourself you're making the right annotation. And they might be in different parts of the paper. So for example, you might have a statement in the results that says, oh, we actually, you know, to address this question, we did this experiment. You want to see that in a paper, but it doesn't tell you what the result of the experiment is. Or you might actually, in a figure legend, actually have the result you're looking for. Likewise, curators might go into materials and methods sections to, you know, to get the details of how this experiment was done. So Danielle and I went to the papers that we were going to curate. We collected all of these kinds of sentences that curators might use. We assigned these different sentences to subclasses of positive. And then we checked each other to make sure that we agreed on how we had uh, classified them. It's not as easy as it sounds, actually. <laughs> Um, and then with these manually curated training sets, we went back and we tried a new approach. So again, we used sentence embedding with BioSent back. And, but this time, we um, Valerio trained a neural network classifier on these sentence embeddings. And so um, the training, we used 80% of our sentences. And then for validation, we used the remaining 20% uh, as tests. And so this is what uh, the result that you find. So uh, what we found is that for expression data, this greatly improved the results that we got. So um, for language positive, the precision before wasn't too bad, but that's now up to 93. Recall is much, much better. But I think most importantly, we found a huge improvement in identifying sentences for expression pattern curation that are relevant or that directly report, report the experimental result. With protein kinase activity, we didn't have years worth of sentences that we had uh, collected during curation. So um, we only had the results for this one uh, round of classification. And we also didn't have for this a sort of language positive. But what we can find is that for curation relevant sentences, our precision and recall are both at uh, 0.97, so it's very high. And then for those sentences that really directly report the experimental result, uh, the real curatable sentences, uh, precision is still quite good at 0.83, and recall goes down, um, as you might expect, a bit. And so over here, um, you see the UMAP visualization of uh, the results of the training. And so on the left, in the blue or turquoise, those are all our negative training sentences. And then uh, towards the bottom right are um, various classes of positive sentences. And so what you can see from this visualization, even though it's flat, a flattened view, is that basically we can separate negative from positive sentences very well. We don't yet know for sure how well we can start to tease out uh, the different flavors of these positive sentences. So for that, we're going to have to do uh, more work, and I think probably get some more um, data for that as well. But we're encouraged by these results, and so we think that we can start to move forward and think about uh, a way to present these sentences to authors for help with fact extraction. So we're going to work on developing a UI. Um, it would be great if we could present these sentences in the context of the paper, if possible. Um, we are also um, work quite closely. Daniela is an editor on the Micropublication Biology Journal. They have a prototype for doing this where authors actually do this kind of um, suggested curation pre-publication. So we're going to work with them uh, to do a similar type of thing for Acknowledge. As we continue to curate, we will continue to collect training set sentences and we'll continue to do validation with new papers that come in. This will just help improve the size of all of our training data. As I mentioned, we have uh, 15 different neural network class document classifiers at Wormbase. We have one for expression data. We have one for catalytic activity. So we can uh, potentially apply these as filters 
um, before we do the sentence extraction. I think that's another way we could help the precision. Uh, lastly, uh, we are aware uh, that uh, there are other methods that can be used to do this. So we would like to do some comparative analyses to see um, how what we've done with the neural networks compares to, say, uh, rule-based methods like RLMSP that Uniprot has used uh, to express their categories, which is something else that we've used at WormBase. Uh, we'd also like to compare you know, the work we did with the simple classifiers initially with expression data to the neural networks on the same training and testing sets. And if there are other new methods out there that people know about, you know, we'd love to hear it to, uh, to try that as well. And uh, finally, uh, WormBase is one of the founding members of the Alliance of Genome Resources, and we are deeply embedded in the literature working group for the Alliance. And so that's giving us a great opportunity um, to start to develop these uh, methods for other species and develop the tools that will allow curators to assess um, and collect training data and assess the results of this uh, for any of the groups that are part of the Alliance. And so, uh, again, I'd like to acknowledge um, the members of the uh, uh, team, uh, Valerio, who does all of our computer science and data classification. Danielle and I do the curation, the validation. This is all uh, done in Paul's group. And also a special thank you to Juan Carlos Chan, who handles all of our curation uh, pipelines at WormBase. Uh, Shannon Marigui, who uh, did our new logo. Hans Michael Muller does all the Texpresso work. Uh, the C. elegans community has been greatly supportive, as well as uh, the literature working group at the Alliance. And of course, our funding for this is provided by the National Library of Medicine. And thank you. Did everybody hear the question? No? OK. So uh, basically, it's a, it's a question of scale, right? And how can we scale this? So um, Val said it took you a long time to get the training data. So it was, um, we weren't working on this full time, right? But it was over the course of a few months that we collected it. But I think it's really, really important for um, us to develop tools and workflows that make this easy for curators to do, right? And so things like maybe, um, you know, in your uh, PDF reader or however you're reading it, as you're doing the curation, you can easily, you know, click and highlight text that supports it and then say, I want this to now be part of this training set send that off to wherever you're storing your training data, you can iterate, and now you have a new set of training data, and do things like that to incorporate this. I think we can also use AI to help find training sentences as well, right? And then curators could just verify it and say, yes, no, put this into the positive or negative. But the interesting thing is that is these classes of, different classes of positives that, um, that make it a little, that was what was time consuming, is to really think through like what kind of positive sentence is this. And so that's where I think when Chris mentioned the artificial intelligence ontology yesterday, if we can include in that, um, you know, terms that would describe uh, the kind of validation, you could go to a top level and say, yes, this is curation relevant, but then if you want, you could go much more granular and describe why it's curation relevant. Yeah. Hi, uh, great. Uh, yes, uh, something obvious to all of us. So, so how far is the Alliance of Genomic Resources getting to push the uh, to push the publishers kicking and screaming towards uh, author uh, author iterated uh, markup? Yeah. So, right, it's a great question. It's something we've talked about a lot <laughs> at these meetings. I mean, it would to the extent that publishers could help. 
<clears throat> would be great. Um, we'd love to do it also as a pre-publication, like that's the model for micro-publication biology because it catches things before they even go out. But yeah, as much as we could get publishers to help with this. If you could great. get one publisher, they might have a lemming effect, okay? One big publisher. Yeah, yeah. If you have suggestions though too for, for how to approach them and how to do it, it would be great. Hi, Kim. Excellent talk, and I'm always very happy to, to see what I'm going to do next, too. <laughs> yeah, that, so this is great. Um, so oh, my question is about, have you checked, remember we did the biocreative yes. Go annotation that we picked all the sentences for the Go? Have you looked into the, if there's anything useful in that data set that for the kindness, I'm thinking? Yeah. So or I for, will, any, or yeah, for any purpose, yeah, in yeah, any way. No, I hadn't done that yet, but we have that. Yeah, we have that data, and I might as well. If it's there, we'll add it, yeah. Um, I, I don't recall how much of that we did for the C. elegans, but it would be awesome to have bigger, right, we'd also to have bigger training data for it. And I think that's a case where we can make use of existing Go annotation, right, and go back to those papers. Um, and for that, you know, we have a wealth of, you know, a long list of references that we can refer to to try to get, yeah. yeah. Special case that we highlighted all yes. the special, yes. all the sentences. That exactly, right. That's what, yeah. 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 that's what we'd like to reuse, mm -hmm. tool like that. Okay, well, that's all we've got for questions, I'm afraid, so we'll move on to the next. Thank you very much. Thank you.